Well, today we are going to use some polymer clay, make a batch of blue marble, and then make a mortar and pestle from it. So stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, so our first step today is to create our marble. And I'm going with the blue marble today because for one, I saw some blue marble online. I thought it was gorgeous. Secondly, I've got this particular blue clay in my collection and I absolutely love the color and I don't often get a chance to use it. And this is, let's see, it is a Fimo's Windsor Blue. And I think it's just a really pretty color. Now I did mix, mix this a little more than half translucent in with the Windsor Blue because I wanted to lighten it. I wanted to make it look a little more translucent, not quite so dense. And I've got blue all over everything. This is a piece of pearl. I believe it's a Sculpey pearl from the feel of it. All that I know is that the uh, bag that I keep it in was, I had written pearl on the bag. So I think it's a uh, Bimo or a Sculpey 3. This is some pre-mixed, I pre-mixed certain combinations of clay when I, and have them on hand. This one is two parts translucent and one part white. And this is a little bit of tr Fimo translucent blue that comes from their effects line of clay. Now we're making way more than we're gonna need for today's project. That's because I've got a couple of ideas of other things I'm hoping to do in the near-ish near future with this same uh, marble piece. So you can see the, per the amounts. You don't need specific percentages of clay. Oh, and I did add just a tiny bit of translucent to this simply because it was an older package, it was a little crumbly, and I wanted to speed up my conditioning of the clay. So we're gonna start by just putting these together. Now we're not, we're making marble. We're not trying to mix these colors. So that's something you do need to be a little careful of when you're doing this. We're not mixing them. We're not blending them. They're going to blend a little, but for the most part, we want these colors to remain somewhat separate. So I'm going to do this. And making marble is fun because it's always a little different. I can take the same exact colors of clay, even in the same amounts and sit down another day and I'll have a different looking chunk of marble clay. And this is gonna take a while. And I won't make you watch me do all of it. I'm gonna start and then I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to work on this off camera. And then I'll come back and show you how it looks. But I'll get you, we'll get started so you can see what I'm going to do. To do this. And now I'm going to take my clay roller and I'm actually going to roll this out. Make it kind of flat. I'm going to fold it like that. And I'm going to roll it up. I'm trying to always roll it the same direction. I want my veins to go pretty much, for the most part, one direction. They'll wave, I want them to wave around a bit, but I want them to go there'll be a, a definite line, linear element to this. Now you can roll it out and just kind of play with it. This is a good time, good thing to do while you're watching a video, while you're watching a movie. Just play with it until it looks the way you want it to look. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to work with this for a few minutes and I'll get this piece also marble together, then I'll come back and we can start making our mortar and pestle. All right, I have both chunks of clay marbled and I love how they turned out. Now I made myself a little tool to form the mortar around. Mortar is the bowl part. I had to look it up to be sure. The mortar part is the bowl part. The pestle is the handle that you pound things with. What this is, I had a wooden spoon that I was using to mix things in my kitchen and the handle broke the other day. So I chop, chopped off an end of the handle and I used an emery board to kind of round the corners a bit. And this is now going to be in my clay tools to use to form things. So let's cut a nice straight line here and then let's cut this 
not that. I'm just going by eye here. Pick a part that you like the way it looks. Wrap it around. Oops, I'll just drop it, that's fine. Cut off any overlap. And this doesn't have to be an exact size because these come in lots of sizes. You guys thought this would be a really fun thing to put that could be put on the dollhouse kitchen counter or it could go a lot of other places too. Let's see how that looks. I think I'm going to put it back on the handle to make sure that it bakes nice and round. I want to kind of take off that extra width there. Work it back. And you can fiddle with this until you get it exactly the shape you wanted. I want my top to be nice and smooth. So I'm going to this. And if you find your clay is too soft to work with, go throw it in your freezer for 15, 20 minutes to firm it up. We do have a lot of translucent in our clays here, so they are a little on the soft side. All right, I'm going to put this off to the side, and I am going to form this. In fact, this little piece here looks like it might be just about perfect. Just kind of make a little snake, round off the end. Where's Mrs. Doll? Oh, here's Mr. Doll. And that looks like a Yep, that looks like a comfortable size. All right, I am going to put both of these pieces into the oven at recommended temperature. Since some of these are FEMO, they're a little cooler temperature to bake with, about 230, 230 degrees. So I'm going to bake these, give them a full 10 minutes, and then I'll come back and we can go on to finishing the outside of these. All right, they are baked and cooled. Now, I did go back with my clay knife and I made this just a little bit shorter. I decided it was a little too tall and it was really crooked. Be so before I baked it, I went ahead and trimmed it up and here's our pestle. So let's go ahead and get some clear finish on this. Now, I'm gonna be very careful. I don't want a clear finish on the inside, just on the outside, and I'm not gonna worry about the bottom. So I'm gonna put this onto here. This is just some of that blue tack stuff. And then this, I want to leave this rounded end uh, mat. So I'm going to put that like that. I have some satin finish Mod Podge. Uh, this is some of the Mod Podge and a brush that the kind people at Plaid sent me. And I'm going to put a clear finish. Hopefully I won't knock that off of there. Now if the top of yours is, a, this or any other piece is rough, you can use an emery board or some sandpaper to sand that edge smooth if you need to. So I don't want any on the inside. Be sure that your clay is room temperature before you try to put the Mod Podge on. Um, you'll have much better results that way. So I'm going to let this dry, and when it's dry, I'll come back and we will look at the completed piece. All right, here is our finished mortar and pestle. I love the detail that you can get with polymer clay making marble. I think this turns out really, really pretty. I don't think the camera is picking up how in how really neat the details are in that marble. And speaking of our blue marble, be sure and come back for the Sunday video tomorrow morning because I am going to make something else out of this same marble to go in the dollhouse kitchen. So come back and see what we make then. Be sure and check the blog post. I hope to have some photos and more details over there. Um, if you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What things would you like to see in future videos?
If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you to hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye!